All right. Welcome back to another episode of Bitfinex Talks. I'm your host, Ricardo Martinez. Today, my guest is Kale, the developer behind the Xiaomi and eCash project on Bitcoin, uh, known as Cashew. Kale, how are you today? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, Kale, my first question is, uh, what's Xiaomi and eCash? Like, what what is cashew as a project can you kind of explain it for the people that don't know yeah of course so uh cashew is a charming eCash system for bitcoin and it's built on top of lightning basically so what it allows you is to build uh, custodial bitcoin wallets with almost perfect privacy so it's an open protocol everyone can have a look at it and uh, work on it and there are a couple of different cashew wallets out there Cashew.me or notstash.app are the two ones with a graphical user interface. And there are a couple of Mint implementations, uh, which we'll be probably explaining in a bit. So Cashew is an open protocol to build Lightning-enabled uh, Bitcoin wallets that give you perfect privacy. Okay, thank you. When you say it's built on Lightning, what do you mean by that? So um, the way it works, maybe maybe we'll we'll get back to what eCash is first, and I'll, I'll explain that, and that will make it easier to understand how it interacts with Lightning. Right? Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So uh, eCash eCash itself is a scheme from 1982. It's a very old thing from David Chaum, which was first invented in the 80s, as I said, and it's using something uh, a piece of cryptography that is known as blind signatures. So what it basically allows you, and uh, I have to say that this is this is so early, this was this is considered historically the first cryptocurrency basically in history was 1982. So what this allows you is, and this is very foreign from what we know uh, in Bitcoin, it allows you to build a payment system that does not use a blockchain. So it's not a decentralized service uh, or a system that runs uh, out there and you hold your keys and you sign transactions and so on, everything that we know from, from blockchains. But on the contrary, there's a central server that it doesn't know how much you have and who you're transacting with. So that's the perfect privacy part. And that server makes sure that eCash cannot be double spent. So while not being able to know what the users are doing, it still makes sure that the eCash that the server is issuing to its users cannot be double spent. And with that, you can build uh, wallets, right? So first of all, the eCash itself is completely separated from Bitcoin. It doesn't have anything to do with it directly. But uh, so now that we have Bitcoin, in my view, we've discovered kind of the internet, uh, the money of the internet, the native currency of the internet. And so in the last couple of years, this, this re-sparked this interest in eCash. And there are now a couple of projects that really look into eCash. How can we make use of this in the Bitcoin, in a Bitcoin world? So back to my uh, previous question, w when you say it's built on Lightning, like how mm -hmm. does it interact with Lightning? How does the Xiaomi and eCash from the Mint um, interact with, with Lightning? Yeah, so that's a good question. So... The user experience for a user using uh, Cashew will be the following. So you open up uh, your wallet. It looks like a very normal, ordinary Lightning wallet. In the best case, the user wouldn't even in, wouldn't even know that they are actually using an eCash wallet or an eCash enabled wallet. It feels like a normal custodial Lightning wallet. So what you do is you open up your wallet and then you say uh, receive invoice, which is, you know, as we know, it's the way to receive money, Bitcoin over a Lightning wallet. You say receive invoice, and what you see is that there's an invoice that you have to pay with another wallet. Uh, what happens in the background, though, is now uh, the invoice wasn't created on your phone, but it was actually created by this Chormian Mint that your phone is connected to. And this Chormian Mint has a Lightning node. And once someone pays this invoice, what the Mint does is then it generates eCash, which is a piece of digital data, that it then sends to your phone. So basically your phone exchanges this lightning payment into the mint against eCash that it gets from the mint. And that way then you hold eCash in your wallet and instead of the server having a concept of, for example, you as a user holding a certain balance or something, it issued you something, a piece of digital data that literally represents the money it is supposed to represent. So let's say if you, if you receive an invoice for 100 Satoshis, you will get eCash worth 100 Satoshis, 
from the mint with the kicker that now if you want to pay with lightning pay you no know, out uh, another wallet on the lightning network what you then do is you take the eCash that you got before somehow and you go back to the mint and you ask the mint to make a lightning payment for you so you say hey mint can you please pay this invoice that i want you know pay a friend's coffee or something you send the mint the invoice and then the mint says okay you want me to pay this but you have to give me eCash for that first to prove that you actually are eligible for this uh, payment so you send them in the eCash give it the invoice and then the mint just makes the transaction for you the most important part of everything that i just said is that this initial process when i created the eCash you know by paying into the mint versus when i exit the mint by giving the eCash back to the mint and requesting a payment these two events cannot be correlated to each other. So the Mint doesn't know that the eCash it gave to me in the first place was the one that I gave it back. That's how blind signatures work. It's a cryptographic magical scheme, basically. And that gives you these fantastic privacy properties of eCash. So aside from the obvious privacy benefits that you get by using Xiaomi and eCash, like what other advantages does it have? Like, does it help with scaling Bitcoin? Um, like why would why would someone want to do this so yeah on top of the privacy there are multiple different uh, aspects why this is worth considering so first of all eCash transactions are near instant so when i send you eCash it is literally a piece of data that i pull from my wallet and then i send it o over any means of communication for example i could send it uh, via an encrypted signal chat or something so that means that the money when it leaves my wallet, it basically instantly reaches you and you take it and you send it to the server once to make sure that uh, it cannot be double spent. But that's then the end of the transaction. So it is uh, not only much more private, but it's instant and it is basically zero fee because it really doesn't cost anything to move the eCash from one place to another. Uh, actually, the server itself isn't involved in the moving the eCash. That's our job as two users, basically. So it's instant and uh, and basically free. Uh, but there are other very like much more advanced things that you can start doing with it. So we are in Cashew, for example. Mm, we have uh, experimented already with programmable eCash. So, so you can take eCash and you can add uh, something like Bitcoin script on top of it, which gives it spending conditions. So with that, you can build atomic swaps, for example. So you could atomically swap eCash against Lightning payment without having this risk of not being paid on Lightning, for example, with a user or something. You could trade eCash tokens uh, with someone else and make sure that you will actually get it by making, for example, these atomic swaps. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, but uh, what I'm very uh, excited about these days and something I spend a lot of time researching is that it turns out that eCash systems allow you to do something that other uh, custodial services, as far as I know, don't allow you, which is proof of liabilities. So right now we're uh, in the midst of researching and, and proposing a way how users of a eCash Mint could actually check whether the Mint is printing eCash without having the Bitcoin that backs this eCash. This would be a truly a breakthrough, I think, because although we see proof of reserve uh, systems popping up everywhere, and especially exchanges are very interested in this to prove their solvency, uh, most of these are not accompanied with a proof of liability scheme. And uh, um, I'm guessing this is uh, mostly due to the problem itself. So it's not easy to solve something. How do you, for example, prove that uh, on an exchange, someone has, you know, uh, someone, uh, not there's not someone out there who has an insanely high uh, account value uh, that you didn't account for in your proof of reserve. So it's, it's hard to prove. But uh, with eCash, it seems there are ways to do that just because it works so so differently from classical custodial systems that would be really really great to also increase the trust uh, uh, to in such such a service so that the users can be sure that uh, the mint doesn't silently print away their eCash the mints are they like they're full reserve like there's they don't make eCash unless satoshis are received correct yeah that is the, that is the hope and that that's the case in uh, for a for a honest 
mint that that is the case but how do you know that the mint is honest that is the question basically that you need to solve there how can users uh, without having to trust the mint can how can they prove whether the mint has been printing eCash without being full reserve so basically or to reformulate this problem how do you make sure that the mint isn't running on a fractional reserve basically and uh, it seems with eCash there are ways or at least possibilities on how to do that uh, up to a certain degree um, I'm not sure if it's a perfect solution yet, but we'll come out with something very soon. And I'm very, very happy and just asking people to review these uh, these proposals um, we want to make and hopefully see them also in practice soon. Does Cashew only work with Lightning or can you also use it with on-chain Bitcoin? Uh, so in principle, you could use it with on-chain Bitcoin, but uh, we decided very early on that we will just build it on Lightning first because, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, it's a lot harder to bootstrap a microeconomy with uh, on-chain Bitcoin. So what I'm trying to say with that is, imagine you set up a mint that others uh, want to use, just uh, making only on-chain payments in and out of the mint possible would mean that people have to wait until they can start using their eCash. So for the user experience itself, Lightning really is uh, fundamental. It makes things so much faster um, uh, so that such that experimentation is much more viable. It also means that you can start experimenting with very low value. So you can just throw a couple hundred Satoshis there and start using Cashew without the risk of losing so much. So um, that's one thing, but obviously it would be possible to also build it on chain. Um, the best way I can think of is actually to keep building it uh, off chain with Lightning, but still allow some kind of a submarine swap on, to, on chain uh, whenever users see the need. Uh, especially uh, when you think about proof of reserves ideas, there are no ways to really make a proof of reserve on Lightning yet. So. If you want to do that, you need to combine it with a on-chain, uh, with an on-chain uh, trusted uh, multi-sig, for example, wallet where the whole world can check whether the Bitcoin the mint says it owns actually it is owned by the mint. What's your long-term vision for Cashew? Like, where do you see Cashew um, evolving towards? So uh, one obvious application of this is, as I said, to make lightning wallets, but I don't think that this is where it stops. So uh, it would be the, the path of least re uh, resistance would be uh, becoming a lightning wallet provider that can just offer this uh, insanely important feature to its users, which is the perfect privacy feature, something that you could uh, be, you know, really uh, stir up the market basically. But uh, I see many more avenues where Cashew can shine. So because Cashew is an open protocol and we've really tried to keep it as simple as possible and to as performant as possible, it means it can be uh, deployed in a very wide range of applications. So you can run a Cashew Mint inside a single website, basically. And you can have a Cashew wallet that runs as a JavaScript snippet in your front end. That means you can have the, the properties of eCash for example, with any uh, website out there that gives you some kind of a Bitcoin balance. Imagine Stacker News or imagine a website with paywalls where you uh, need to pay for each article that you want to read and so on. So there are many, many uh, examples out there where users already uh, opted in to get a balance on that website and then keep using the website. And with Cashew, you have the ability to build these systems such that you don't track and you cannot track what the users are doing with their money on the on your website this is a, a great value proposition i think especially for consuming media this will be uh, very uh, very uh, fruitful another thing i can see is that um, there will be larger financial institutions adopting ecash uh, as a uh, fundamental technology on which they want to build uh, on top of so these could be financial services um, like classical financial services such as loans or payments or uh, stuff like that but it could also be uh, for example exchanges or other players that want to um, experiment with new types of trading or exchanging value between their users so I'm, I'm very hopeful so since cashew is literally a fundamental technology or eCash itself is a fundamental technology it means that Basically, every custodial service out there that exists that you can think of, may it be 
uh, wallet of Satoshi, maybe a, a Bitcoin miner in a mining pool, or a small balance on a website where you read articles. All of these systems can be replaced because they're all built on the same custodial ledger system, basically. All of these systems can be replaced by an eCash system. So that is where I see huge potential and a wide variety of, of fields where something like Cashew can be very useful. Another question is how is Cashew either similar or different than Fediment, the other Xiaomi and eCash project currently underway in the Bitcoin ecosystem? Uh, so uh, in its heart, both projects are fairly similar. They use the same cryptographic primitives to make this eCash system itself. So both have similar uh, privacy features. Uh, the, the biggest difference between Cashew and Fediment is that Fediment relies on a, a federated custody system. That means that uh, when I speak of a mint, I usually mean a single institution. Uh, in the case of Fediment, this one single mint is usually owned by a n of m multisig party basically there are multiple in uh, multiple people multiple entities controlling uh, the mint and they also control the on-chain funds with the same quorum so that means uh, in the case of fediment the risk of getting rug pulled basically is lower just by the fact that you uh, distribute the trust across uh, a couple of uh, parties in the case of Cashew, we only uh, Cashew works only for a single signature entity that controls the the mint and the funds themselves. That uh, makes that makes it, uh, uh, I think, also a lot easier to implement. So it allows these experimentations, for example, that you can literally plug it into your website. But it also makes it uh, very performant. So since you don't have a consensus algorithm where uh, that needs to keep track of the decisions of every single member of the of the quorum, you can build systems that have a very high throughput of transactions per second, for example. So you know, to summarize, I would say they, uh, they start with the same principles, uh, namely that eCash is something that can greatly improve privacy, but they attack the problem from different uh, directions. Is there any planned uh interoperability between the two different kinds of eCash like would I from a cashew uh, wallet be able to send a Fediment user a payment with my eCash and have it like a uh, comic swap or something yes that that will work and that already works today so uh, so it is in, uh, important to realize that once you have so even within cashew itself when you are also the same it goes for fediment if you have two different mints two different entities or two different you know quorums in case of fediment the eCash within the mints between the mints is not compatible with each other so you can only exchange eCash inside your mint so it's kind of a closed system but uh, that's not so bad that actually isn't uh, isn't a problem because we already have the lightning network so Basically, you can imagine the Lightning Network as something like the connecting tissue between different mints out there in the world. So these could be two different uh, cashew mints, for example, but this could also be a cashew mint and the Fed, uh, and the Fedi mint, basically. So in the case when, let's say, you're a Fedi mint user and you have your Fedi mint Lightning wallet, and I'm a cashew user, I have my cashew Lightning wallet. In order to make a payment to you as a user you just show me your lightning invoice and i just scan your lightning invoice and what happens in the background is my eCash is sent to my mint and it's burned there and then the mint makes the payment to your mint and your mint takes the bitcoin payment and generates new eCash that then issues you so basically it takes this path over lightning and uh, makes the, uh, settles the inter mint payments basically and that is a great thing. I think this is also something that uh, we're seeing because of Lightning itself, because it uh, just enables these insanely super fast payments for Bitcoin. So the way I think of it is we have the, the fundamental sound money layer uh, below everything that is Bitcoin on chain. We have the payment layer that uh, is now Lightning that enables us these super fast payments and eCash systems on, sit on top of that, making uh, all the payments extremely private and even cheaper and even faster than Lightning themselves. Okay, wow. Um, another question I have is since Cash is an open protocol, um, is there anything stopping it from being implemented on like another kind of uh, blockchain like Ethereum or, or Monero or something like that? 
or um, another, to expand on that also, um, can Cashew, I guess, be used to issue tokens like on Bitcoin? Um, I know there's other projects like RGB that are that are kind of looking at doing that. Um, can Cashew be used for either of those things? So, yes, uh, in principle, Cashew could be used to issue other tokens on Bitcoin, but it, and it also could be used on other chains themselves to issue whatever else. Um, that's what I was trying to say when I said it's very it's completely separated from how blockchains work. Basically, the the most high level and generalized way of looking at Cashew would be it's a different way to make an accounting system themselves. So it's basically replacing classical accounting letter based accounting systems where you need to store the user's data. And with Cashew, you can upgrade that. And uh, yeah, from that it follows that you can do everything else as well. So you could build Cashew even for fiat, for example, uh, in which model you would uh, send fiat payments to a bank, and then a bank would issue eCash that you can then use somewhere else. This is actually uh, how it all started. So when we go back to the 80s and uh, the beginnings of the 90s, DigiCash, which was a company of David Chaum, was trying to do exactly that to build an e-cash system for for uh, the fiat uh, for the fiat world. This was way before anything like PayPal or credit cards existed, so that could have been a very um, revolutionary step in the development of online payments. Unfortunately, things didn't go so well, and they they didn't succeed um, due to different reasons. But in principle, it could be built on top of everything. Um, I just want to still make a um, difference here between how cashew works and how things like rgb work because in the case of rgb you create uh you issue tokens as a user you can issue tokens and um, they are then stored in the taproot tree of a bitcoin transaction so that means everything that you do with rgb is non-custodial and uh and then you can start using it um, i'm just you know to reiterate and so everyone is very clear about this e-cash systems are custodial systems. So uh, either you trust a single sig sigma, uh, mint or a multi-sig mint, but at the end of the day, it is a custodial system where you have to trust the entity where you put your Bitcoin in that you will get it back out again. In the case of a, um, some, you know, a random asset on RGB, for example, you don't have to ask anything. But I mean, I would also say uh, it's you cannot exchange it against Bitcoin anyway. But uh, so in that regard, it's it's very different. In that case, like, do you see how how do you envision this? Is it do you think that there's going to be like large mints that are kind of like centralized, kind of like currently we see in Lightning, where there's like some of the bigger businesses have some of the more like higher liquidity nodes and, and process the majority of the transactions? Or do you think that uh, Cashew is a little bit more accessible to people running than running a Lightning node and that people will actually like run their own mints in, in a more decentralized fashion? Um, so th these are the two ways this could play out. So uh, as you said, um, we're, tr we're really focusing on keeping it so simple to be able, so you can run a Cashew Mint as well. And this is already possible. For example, the easiest way to do that is to um, install Allen Bits, which is software that you can run on your Lightning node and it enables you to do many, many very cool things. And one of the cool things that you can do is to run a Cashew Mint. It literally just takes you three clicks. With that, when it becomes so easy to run a mint like that, it becomes, you know, uh, it can really grow and decentralize across the planet, uh, such that, for example, you could run a mint for your own bar or for your conference, for your school, or any type of, you know, group of people doing something. It could be an online community and it could be an offline community. But at the same time, as you said, the largest uh, Lightning wallets out there today are custodial ones. And this uh, there are reasons for that. And it's also problematic because as Bitcoiners, we want people to hold their own keys and hold their own money. But as much as you want to wish that, uh, reality is just the fact is that uh, Wallet of Satoshi, for example, is the largest wallet out there and it has the largest user base. And it's a fully custodial system. So the Bitcoin that you have in there is not really your Bitcoin. It can take it away from you. But at the same time, Wallet of Satoshi also knows everything what you're doing. They know every single invoice that you're paying and with whom you're transacting inside the system as well. So, and uh, I mean, 
they need to do it. That's how a classical ledger system works. Otherwise, you cannot build a ledger. And uh, so I see also possibilities for very large applications like that. For example, Wallet of Satoshi to adopt a protocol like the Cache protocol in order to offer more private services to their users. Uh, I can also, as I uh, said before, see that uh, fin like financial services that are not wallets uh, will also start looking into this and might be interested in playing around with eCash. Yeah, I think that's a big barrier for like mainstream adoption is, is the lack of privacy um, with on-chain Bitcoin transactions. So with Cashew, how many mints are, are there right now? Like how, how many people are actually using Cashew? Uh, it's hard for me to say, so I don't know. Uh, anyone can run a mint. Um, I just know that you know, one statistics I looked at was from the LNBits demo server where you could, where you can do what I just described. Basically, it's uh, one demo server that everyone can just play around with to test LNBits. And on there alone, there were, last time I looked, more than 300 mints already running. Uh, and that's that's a result of making it as easy as possible. So basically, I can imagine most of these are people testing Cashew and playing around with it, maybe developing on it, uh, but I can't really uh, say. And the funny thing is they can't also know what the users of those mints are doing. In that regard, also, it's important to stress that people should be very cautious about uh, the mints that they choose because uh, they literally custody your money. So you should only choose a mint where you know that this mint is trusted. E either it's from an institution that you uh, that you trust, or it's from your personal circle of people, for example, that you know and can can hold accountable. So in that regard, um, you should be a bit cautious. But uh, still, the playing field is now more level than ever before. So everyone should still experiment with these things and start building on top of it. Uh, my last question is at what stage um, is Cashew currently at right now? Is it safe for like people to, to use with real money or is it still kind of in its like reckless stage? Um, it is still in its reckless stage because Cashew, the protocol itself, the project is only half a year old and we've Done so we've uh, achieved some astonishing things in this very short amount of time. So uh, there are four different wallets out there already, and the fifth one just started. Someone started working on the fifth one uh, now recently. So I'm very optimistic that we will get even better software in the future. Um, but there are also some, uh, some details in the protocol that we're still uh, trying to iron out. So one of the things that we're working on literally right now is a way to. Uh, hold safe backups for your tokens. So uh, in, in the current uh, clients that you have, you have a backup option, but uh, you, you have to make the backup after every transaction, basically very similar to Lightning, where you need to backup all the eCash in your wallet and store it somewhere such that if you lose your device, you can restore it. Um, in the future, uh, we already figured out how to do it. It will be possible to just write down a single seed phrase, and from that seed phrase, you'll be able to recover your funds. So, in that, uh, when we reach that point, I think Akasha will become a lot more safe to use. And additionally, as I said before, we're working on this proof of liability scheme, and these things combined together, I think the proof of li liability scheme, uh, especially, will. Uh, enable mint providers, mint runners to um, increase the trust that the users have in them. And I think we'll very soon be on a, at, a, at a point where I can also recommend Cashew in daily, daily use. So that said, if you're a developer and you got interested in this, please have a look at it. Uh, it is, you can play around with it with a couple of Satoshis. If you're a user and you got interested in as well, just use small amounts to get a uh, feeling what eCash is and what the cypherpunk future uh, will look like. So you you made a call to action to developers to get involved. Um, how could they do that? Like where is the Cashew community gathering to discuss things? Um, so you can head over to cashew.space. That is uh, our website where you will find information about what Cashew is. And there's also a documentation website with more information. In there, you will find many different libraries that people have written already that enable you to build a Cashew app very easily. There is the Cashew GitHub repository that you'll find as Cashew BTC. That's the GitHub user. And otherwise, you'll just, you can just ping me at any time. I'm Kelly BTC on Twitter. Uh, my DMs are open. Just write me if you're interested. 
to contribute to Cashew or literally to any other Bitcoin project out there, I urge you that you should start looking into Bitcoin development. We literally need every single developer out there. And if you're interested in Cashew specifically, just write me a message and uh, I'll show you how you can contribute. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today and um, giving us such a great explanation about Cashew. Thanks, Ricardo. Thanks for having me.